You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. It's the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast with Tamara and David. Um, and we're talking today about, um, or we were talking a little earlier on about our planned trip. But we had a technical difficulty. Yeah, we were talking about our planned trip to Berlin because there's going to be a flight from Banja Luka, hopefully in November, next month it starts, fingers crossed, COVID allowing, um, to go to Berlin because my sister lives in Berlin. And if you could only do one thing in Berlin, what would it be? I would go buy some gluck wine and watch the, the remains of the wall. Some gluck wine. <laughs> gluck wine. So, gluck wine is happy wine. Gluck wine. You mean glue wine? Glue wine. The cooked... the Cooked mulled wine. Mulled wine, yes. Malted wine. I would take a cup, like in a coffee cup, and I would go see the remains of the Berlin Wall. That's because you're a starry Yugoslav. You're an yes, old, old exactly. communist. Yes, exactly. And right? what about you? What would you do in a Berlin um, I would go and have um, a currywurst, which is uh, a German sausage with a curry sauce, together with German frites, uh, and mayonnaise and the crazy thing is why do they have curry curry is more specific for England than for Germany all right. um, the, you know? I, I won't go through the whole story but during the occupation of um, Berlin which became West Berlin uh, at the end of the Second World War a German lady was trading um, sort of like foodstuffs to the British soldiers in the British sector and she found out that they were eating sort of like curries and everything because of our Indian uh, heritage from the empire and everything. Uh, and sh- she started to make, she thought, well, the, German, the, the soldiers like to eat German sausage and they also like curry. So, so if I put it together and make a curry sauce, and I can call it a curry sausage, curry first, uh, and I'll sell it to the British troops. I, I don't know whether that's a legend or it's a folk tale, but it certainly is that curry first is sold everywhere in Germany and I believe it outsells um, the normal bratwurst fried sausage and bockwurst which is uh, boiled sausage yeah so I would like to have that oh yeah you that you can there's sausages that you've can only dream of uh, in Germany so I I, I I would do that I guess I will join you then <laughs> you can also go ha- to Berlin you can also we can also <laughs> go down to the um, to the lake in the middle, uh, the uh, Stausee is it? I can't remember anyway. Uh, and uh, have a Berliner Weisse, which is German beer with um, a sort of syrup yeah. in it as well. Yeah, that, that's good. We had something similar in Graz when we went to Austria. Yeah. In the Alien. Yeah. Called is a coffee bar in Alien. Yeah. The building, the blue building. That's right. But we won't talk about Graz because. Okay, so what are we talking <laughs> about today? So today we're talking about food and. Um, Zimnitsa. So what does Zimnitsa mean? Zimnitsa is like a winter food. It's food that is uh, prepared for the winter. You eat it in the winter time because uh, you don't have uh, vegetables in the garden. And uh, you just, how you say, preserve them for winter and you eat them in the winter. Because it's the se- end of season for the garden. You pres- For example, you can make wine from the grapes that you have. Uh, you can pickle some cucumbers or some squash. Uh, then you can make ivar from paprika, which is like peppers, bell peppers, which are the um, bell peppers are... Uh, ivar is like a pate made of the peppers. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, how would you say it? Yeah, I say, yeah a paste. It's like a yeah, vegetable, it's, it's, vegetable it's, spread. Vegetable yes, spread, a, a vegetable specific. spread, definitely. And you can do many other things, depending what you have in your garden. <clears throat> like tomato sauce from tomatoes. Is it, only, is it only a rural thing? I mean, we live pretty like semi-rural lifestyle. We are in You can a pickle cabbage as well. Oh, well, yeah, but doesn't that stink? And pickle onions, which I just Do, did yeah, recently. But doesn't pickled cabbage stink? Yeah, you make sauerkraut. Yeah, I know. We just had, we just had to bleep um, uh, Tamara. Tam out. Tamara but, got but, too but, emotional. But, 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 yeah, we live a semi-rural lifestyle, so it's like... Um, Half a, a People t- used to do it in the flats because they have basements. Well, in I was going to say, do they do that in town? For example, uh, in the middle of They bank. used to do it, but now, I don't know, with all these new mothers and the new health style eating the junk food on the streets, they don't do it anymore. They don't even know what the Zimnitsa is, many people. But many people still do it. Okay, so, so let's... So look. it's like uh, from before, I think, generations and people from the winter. So it's mainly, it's mainly a rural thing. It's getting the produce that you've been growing throughout 
the spring and summer and autumn months. So for us here, and it's your dad's pet project, right? So your dad has had this year tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, there's been strawberries. Yes, but they, they don't peppers. Get peppers. He's got grapes up there. Are we going to try to pickle some grapes? Yeah. Not to pickle them, to preserve them in jars. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> squash. <coughs> mm -hmm. What is Tikvitsa again? T zucchini. Zucchini. And then there's Patelijan, which is... Uh, eggplant. Eggplant. And what else? Then he's got spicy peppers, isn't he? Yes, Feferonki. Feferonki. And garlic. Garlic is already preserved. Onions. Preserved. Yeah, but when the onions... We're, we're going to plant some more onions now. Mm -hmm. So but to have some green onions, because onion like colder weather. Yeah. So we're going to do it now. We're what still going to you... have some nice weather, but you can do onions now and green salad. Yeah. You see, that's where your Canadian, your, your Canadian in, in you comes out when you say green onions, because we call them spring onions. Spring onions. What is a spring onion, David? It's, it's always an onion a green spring. onion. Yeah, I know. Um, and your dad did some... Did he do sweet potatoes this year or just normal potatoes? No. Just normal potatoes. And I think that's it for the garden, right? That's it. So it's a lot of work keeping it. But at this time of year, we it, it's down to Zimnitzer. Our Zimnitzer was two days, or has been two, at the moment, two days of washing and cutting up into strips bell, pep bell peppers, which you call <coughs> paprika. <coughs> mm -hmm. But this year they they were pretty small and measly and yes because the weather was really bad this year we had a lot of dry very hot and dry weather no rain so everything this year is really bad and you were getting annoyed with it at one stage you, you, it was like driving you up the wall in the kitchen We've, we should yes, have done it outside it's but the it was most chilling. boring job on the planet that you can do is to clean and cut the peppers in little strips and when you have thousands of peppers to cut like that's two days of cutting we've been cutting peppers for two days and well, we, uh, yeah, okay, but and plus uh, I have a pain in my shoulder mm -hmm. from the fall that I fall uh, two months ago, and now it's all back. I don't know. Is it because a new pillow or something? So, yeah, but it's a tedious job. And we made two things. One um, on, on on the first batch. How many kilos was it in the first batch? Four, five, six? No, first batch was six kilo, and the second one around five. Okay, a so on, less than five. On, on that first batch, and we're going to make a video, we're going to publish a video of it in our new style, which is no music, no commentary, just like as it is. But um, last season, I think it was the first time, correct me if I'm wrong, you made a special mustard sauce that then you put the... This is the third with. season I'm making third. this. See? I'm third getting... or fourth season. I'm not sure because I really like it. It's so good. You make a... Like... Wait, but it's not traditional here, is it? I mean, people don't... Uh, I've never seen it apart from here. You know, paprika in mustard sauce. Well, I don't know where it comes from. I find it a recipe in a magazine that I bought in a, in a kiosk. But I've seen people making it before. Our vet, um, no, our vet talked about it today, didn't he? Because he saw your post on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not mine, yours. Oh, right. Because I didn't post that. I don't think I post about mm. it. Uh, <clears throat> so the it's very piquant. It's quite strong. Some people might not be able to eat it if they don't. Because uh, some people get stomachache. Like my mom, she can eat paprika in senf. But me and my dad, we love it, and we have a pretty good stomach. I like, it. I like stomach. it too. I like it. Too. And it goes very well with barbecue, with meat, and things like that. And the second salad that we made was a lavachka salata, which is the same thing, but in a tomato sauce. It's uh, You make it slightly different, but uh, it's in a tomato sauce. And people usually put parsley, but I like it with oregano and garlic. Tastes the best. So two days of work, a total of ten? Maybe two and a half. Because one day we were just cutting the peppers and then yeah. we got tired. So I think the total amount that we had this year then was six, ten, ten and a half, eleven kilos in total. Around eleven kilos, I would say. But the year before, there's still some more peppers in the garden. Right, but the year before it was much, much more. Oh yes, it was much more. Yeah, we ate a lot of peppers as well throughout the season because we like it here, like a baked paprika salad, a roast. Roast, roasted paprika salad. So you roast your peppers in the uh, oven and then 
red peppers. You usually we use red peppers. You roast them in the oven, then you peel them off from the skin, and then you place them on a plate, and then you uh, season them with some parsley, garlic, olive oil, and a little bit of vinegar. We love eating that. I remember either the first or second year that we were here um, when your aunt came up as well. Um, um, and that year there was tons and tons and tons of bell peppers and you made Ivor. I remember that. Yeah, we did. We did. Ivor is good. I love Ivor. Where did, where did, these skills are passed down from mother to daughter normally. Yes. yes, and you can find lots of recipes on YouTube. And uh, some people are posting grandma's Ivar, grandma's bread grandma's style of pickled peppers grandma's style of that so so you you can find some old recipes on on youtube today people are posting it. and there's lots of like cooking channel channels uh, like lots of ladies from serbia from this country they're doing a lot a lot of cooking i mean what your mother does is very traditional i mean she with a lot of things that lily does she's conservative with a small c whereas you you're always into what's your favorite phrase with my twist. With my twist, yeah. I have to put my twist in everything. <laughs> That's only because I love oregano. I would kill for oregano. You know, <laughs> you said, I'm going to do pickled onions. And I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing because pickled onions... Brits. I found a recipe on YouTube. Yeah, but, but that's no, not, no, it's that, not that's pickled not pic onions. It's a quick pickled onion. I know, but it's not you pickled make it, onions you like eat I know. It in two days. You it's not pickled it. onions like I know. No. Because they're whole. They're tiny and they're, they're complete when they yeah, get Yeah, they're pickled. like a tiny, But you made onion. these strips... And you said, look at, taste this. Uh, tell you, it's like rocket fuel. What is the rocket fuel? It's so strong. It's lovely. I love onions. Like, I could not live without onion, garlic, red bell peppers, and oregano. No way I could live with these, without these. One of the things I really do appreciate being here is that there's so many things that are homemade. I love sauerkraut as well. I Keep could eat it plain. Yeah, but when you do Kiesli Cooper sa or sour cabbage or, or, or pickled cabbage, you, normally, you, you don't normally boil it, do you? Or do you? No. We just put salt. You yeah, put but when you, heat you, it, when you, serve, you, it, when you serve it as part of a dish. No, we eat it like a salad mainly. Or we make it like a cooked cabbage. You see, German sauerkraut is normally like Boiled. warm. Yeah, and, and they put like... No, uh, we like it like sal slalina. salad. They put slalina in it to give it that, that yeah, porky, you can porky cook, taste. Yeah, you, you can cook it like that with the slalina or some other meat, but uh, or you can make sarma from it, from the pickled cabbage. But I, I love it as a salad as well. You just put a little bit... You wash it, obviously, with water to get rid of the saltiness. And then you put some uh, red paprika on top. And it tastes amazing. But it's a lot of work for small output. Once again, we did 11 kilos over two days, driving each other nuts, slicing, slicing this. It's Go, a hard work, yes. Yeah, it was a lot of work. And I think we've only but made... It's worth it. How many? 20 glasses? 20 jars, rather? Yeah, I think 10 of each. About 10 of each. So it's a lot of work. 10 of sam, 10 of the... Yeah. That's all you get. Because paprika shrinks once you cook it, when you mm -hmm. cook it. So what uh, your dad's done the cabbage. So the cabbage is in the big yes. burra, in the big um, vat. Yeah. At the moment. He also, he did, also did some sliced cabbage. Yeah, he well. did shredded cabbage shredded, as well. Yeah. So we've got that. What else will we have? We haven't done cucumber, have we? We haven't pickled our own cucumber this year. No, because we haven't had any. We had few just to eat like this fresh, but uh, not, not the good ones for pickling. Now, tell me a little bit about this experiment you're going to try we don't know if it's going to work but the idea is to take the grapes now do we take them off? oh yes we take I, them, i've seen a recipe uh, on one channel that i follow from gardening i think they're from serbia that they uh preserve the grapes so you take the grapes you on, wash still them on the stalks on the stalks you wash them you take them off the stalks so they're individual and then you wash them again and then you put them in a jars then you top them up with the cold water and you put one tablespoon of sugar, like a white sugar. You close the jars and then you put them on a pot upside down. You fill up with the water and you boil them for 15 minutes. That's the pasteurization then? Yes. Uh -huh. But I will do that in the oven, my style, because I, I hate boiling things in the boiling things. And uh, we, we're going to try make two jars maybe, or f three jars. Would you class that as Zimnitzer as well? Yeah, they say it stays fresh and everything. I don't know. I have to try it. 
because we did a video that we, I mean, we, we watch a lot of video channels now from Azerbaijan. Um, and they, they are making some really uh, amazing videos about traditional cooking. And one of the ones that we tried to copy, and I think it tasted nice when it um, was doing that beef in a jar, but use, you, uh, how do, what do you call it? We call it zapping, but what's the, I don't know what the real term is when you put the meat in the pan briefly to... Well, zap it, yeah. Yeah, we zapped it in the pan and then put it in. But the guy from Azerbaijan actually took beef. He put it with... Uh, peppercorns and bay leaves yes without water he salted it as well he salted it and then he put it in the jar yes and at, he boiled it in a pot of very water. slow cooked wasn't slow it cooked, very yeah, slow for cooked for a few hours yeah and he didn't open it now uh, that we set, didn't open it you had a hard time opening it yes but what i mean is that, that they keep it then for zimnitz that they have meat for yeah, their zimnitz i don't know i would never preserve i don't think like that, that the ball in, in the southeast europe in this in the western balkans nobody does that no, I mean, you, we make sausages, so we dry the meat, but I don't remember people seeing. We freeze, freeze the meat. That's the point. There's going to be, you do, uh, what did we do a few years ago? Winter pig, wasn't it? Winter pork. Yes, yes winter pork. So I think here, right, uh, for Zimnitz, as far as, far as meat is concerned, it's smoked, isn't it? Smoked meat. Smoked, you make sausages, smoked, and then the rest you freeze it. And you make pork chops as well. Tradak. Yeah, pork scratchings you make for people lard. in England. Pork scratchings. You make lard. Yeah. Yeah. Pork scratchings. Yeah. Are you glad that you do Zimnitz? You know what? I mean, you're a sim- next time you okay. should try pork scratchings with curry. I heard that somewhere. I don't remember where. Pork scratchings and curry. Yeah, you put a little bit of curry powder on top and you eat it. Apparently, it tastes Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, hang on. But when you make the when you make the pork scratchings here, you do put salt over the top. Yes, but you can also put some curry. Let's make it English. How would that go down in the village? How would our neighbours, for example, if we if well, we, we make gave it them... for us, David? We don't. Tell no, but the what neighbor. would what would it, what do you think the reaction would be with our neighbours here? He if you would think we are crazy because I don't think people here like curry as much. That's true. Lots of people don't like curry in this country. I do. I love curry. And also, but oregano for me, it's the. You know, you know, you were talking about bell pepper paste, mm-hmm. Ivar. Mm-hmm. The tomato equivalent, which I like better than Ivar, it's called pinja. It's pinja. It's pinja also a zimnitzer. Yes. So it only is. made at this time of year. Yeah. There you go. Usually. If anybody's listening to this podcast from the United Kingdom, or from the United States, or anywhere else for that matter, do you, wherever you are, um, make things? just for winter i cannot really i mean i was a city boy i grew up in west kensington in london so i mean you can't get further away from rural living than there and i can't ever remember that and my grand my irish grandmother came from rural ireland and i don't think she she made stuff for winter maybe it's only a balkan thing (laughs) well no no because south caucasus is you know, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, they do. Yeah, but you, we have like a lot, lots of vegetables and things and you, you don't want to let them go to waste and you would certainly cannot eat them all at once. So you got to do something with them. That's the point. Do we do anything with the apples as far as the minister is concerned? We didn't have many at all. But would we have done? Yeah, we make chutney every year, don't we? Yeah. Oh. Well, there it is. That's what we've been up to. Um, there are a lot of videos, well, a lot of videos. There's definitely two videos coming out about what we did with the bell peppers, which really causes confusion because when I say paprika... People uh, usually think of the spice. They think of the, the spicy, which is pfefferonki here, right? Yeah. And I have to say it's bell peppers. And they say, why don't they call them No, bell we pe- have also spice paprika that you put in a goulash and things like that. It's mm-hmm. like a grind, dried and grind paprika. It does not have to necessarily be spicy. It's but you put spices with things. Yeah, I do. I like and it. What's that, uh, that that spice that we like so much from Turkey? Su- sumat. Sumat. It's so good on salad. It's it like w- a lemon. W- would you use sumat, <laughs> Turkish sumat, for, for zimnitsa at all? No. No. Not the sort of thing that you would use? No, no. Okay. So just before we finish, we went to the vets this morning. Thank you very much to Boyan. What's Boyan's colleague's name? Stefan. Stefan and Boyan. Stefan. Step. Near Stefan. 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 Stefan Kukilo and Boyan Ubovic. There you go. 
They so have a one health. One health vet? One health vet. They work at the one health vet, and I think the owner is Stevan. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. We never but we took, we took Mimish, Mimsha. Mimsha. Um, and she's just come back, so we're trying to rush around and get normal things done because... She needs to be uh, two more days kept. She got, the, she got the snip because we refused to let the animals here, I don't know, go natural really because yeah. there's a huge problem in the country with um, cats, that, feral cats and feral dogs and everything like that. Yes. So, how's Mimsha? <laughs> that's it. Okay, right. So, that's it. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you soon, very the, soon. On the next one. On the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And Watch all the videos that and our making. blog and our newsletter and all the links are below. Yes. Say say ciao for now in Serbski. Ciao for now in Serbski. Vidimo se sutra. Doviđenja i prijatno. Narode, uživaj!